Hey guys, it's me, John Anthony Chihachsalthetto, and I am back for part two of my monster haul of comic books from this past week. Uh, you got to see some stuff in video one where I showed you some pickups from a local comic shop uh, and then from a sale here at our galaxy this past weekend, which is also a local comic shop here in Tucson, Arizona. They're always putting things together um, uh, on semi-monthly basis with different, with different uh, sales and stuff like that and went in and some of those books that I picked up were really really nice looking um, Will and Jorge are working there and they've done a really really great job of organizing a lot of the new collections that have come in so they're alphabetized so if there's stuff that you're looking for they're just not out in the main boxes but they've gotten everything um, set up and then when you find stuff that they're uh, they're going through and grading and pricing it really really quickly as well um, so definitely support local. Um, and then if you go during one of those sales, I mean, you can pick up some pretty cool, some pretty cool stuff as well. So Grayson, get out of my swag. <laughs> Grayson sniffing through my election defender swag, which I, I guess maybe I should show you guys. So my sister and I signed up to do election defenders, which is a nonpartisan, uh, nonprofit group that goes out to the polls and their poll watchers. Um, so what they do is we're going to do voter support, handing out PPE, water, uh, kind of cheerleading people and, and helping them stay motivated to stay in line in case the lines are super long. And also working with the voters and keeping them focused in case there are agitators and doing de-escalation in case people show up trying to suppress the vote. Um, in Tucson, I don't know if we're really anticipating a whole lot of that, a big time confrontation or anything, but I do believe in somebody's right to vote. I, I think that's one of the most important things you can do. It doesn't matter if the person that you're, the party you're voting for is who I'm voting for or not. You, you should be able to do that and you should be able to do that without any fear of intimidation or retaliation. Um, and anybody who's doing anything like that, uh, you're you're in the wrong um and if you were confident enough about who you want to see win the election you wouldn't feel the need to do those things but the reason i'm doing this is because it's something i firmly believe in and that is you being able to stand in line and wait your turn to be able to cast your ballot because i do believe in the concept of one man one vote and i do hope one of these days the electoral college gets abolished because that's not a way to do something if it's not one man, one vote, then your vote doesn't really count. So that that's, that's my political thought process for right now. And even then, it's not really that political because um, I believe in your, your right to vote. So this is um, count every vote. And then on the back side, it's got the tally marks, which is the logo for the election defenders as well. Sure, my stepdad probably gets a kick out of this. He's he's very pro vote and everything, but it's also uh, black and uh, black and gold, and he's a big Steelers fan. So you got the hat, not really a hat guy, so I probably won't wear it. And then we've got the gator, which you wear over your mask. And so if you see this tomorrow, with the yellow with the gold shirt. Um, up at the Sabino uh, Sabino Canyon Church, uh, and that's that's going to be me, and I'll be there helping support you with your your civic duty to cast your ballot. All right. Anyways, back to comics because comics aren't political or anything. I I always laugh at that when somebody gets really upset about political agendas with comic books, and they're like, I don't understand why comics have to be political, and I'm like. Yeah, I don't understand why Captain America had to punch Hitler on the front of Captain America Comics number one either. That wasn't political at all either. Anyways, so these are from a collection of uh, Collector's Haven on the Comic Book Shopping Network on Facebook. Um, Collector's Haven has three or four different shows that they do with three or four different uh, sets of uh, retailers. And so I've been picking up stuff from all of them, from Rick, from Dash. Um, it's, it's a husband and wife duo. I, I can't remember their names right now, but they do stuff like during the middle of the day on like Thursdays and Fridays. 
and have some pretty cool stuff as well. And the cool thing is they're all in the same area of Arizona, so they shipped out together and combined my shipping, which is effing awesome for me. Sweet. Okay, so this is the one that I picked up at the very, very end of the last show. Let's see if I can get this cut out of here really, really quickly. I thought this was going to be one of the oversized books, but it is not. This is the only one of these covers that I have picked up. And it is the Alex Ross Timeless cover for Black Panther of T'Challa. And it's... I like Alex Ross's work. Uh, I, I wouldn't say he's my favorite artist, but his... His work is phenomenal, and I mean, just to think, like, okay, this costume is jet black, right? It's solid black, but there's so much emotion and so much character in this painting. So I, I just, I liked it a lot. Somebody else actually wanted it too. I really wanted to give it to them, um, but they, the person was okay with me having it, which is it was really nice. So I, I picked up. The Black Panther Timeless. And I think that was from Dash's show. Wow, these and these this group of people I purchased from them before. This is only like my second package from them though, because um, we combined it and put it all together into one. This isn't even a medium box, this is a big box. So all right. So first, these are some books from uh, when I started this box with Rick. And this is really cool. This is brand freaking new. Shrink wrapped and everything. The Punisher returned to big nothing. This is the original miniseries from the mid uh, 80s by um, Grant, Zek, and Beatty. And I have this, a used copy that I picked up, I think, at Bookman's, um, signed by, because that was necessary, um, signed by Zek and Beatty from uh, New Mexico Comic Expo last year. Really, really cool. Love the book. Don't like to read a lot of my stuff that's autographed unless, like, I, I can't help it, but this is, now I have this copy as well. So I'm super stoked about that. And I picked up quite a few Punisher magazines. Some of these, some of these are just these beautiful painted covers, like number ten. I don't know if you can see this, his face. Like just really, really spot on, well done books. Like number four, number three, which is a great action shot as well. Number five, and these are all in really great condition too. Like just beautiful colors. Um. This is a great one, throwing a guy out of a helicopter and he's already stabbed him a couple times in the gut before chucking him. Um, just beautiful. Like this one is very Clint Eastwood-esque, very Dirty Harry-esque. Um, very, very well done uh, paintings. Um, this may be one of the big ones that I picked up. Epic Illustrated with the story, let's say right there, Revenge of the Jedi. So this was before they changed the title back to Return of the Jedi. The Bizarre Adventures, with one of my favorite characters right there, Nightcrawler. And then I grew up, I was born in 78, but I mean, in the 90s is really when I hit my formative years. And this was always a rotation uh, of something I love to watch, the 90s animated X-Men TV show. And this is uh, the animated special. Right. 
some more Punisher goodness. Punisher the prize. Punisher die hard in the big easy. Oop. You can tell these are all from different different sale days because they packed them all separately. Got uh, 171 Walking Dead, First Princess. All-Star Comics uh, number 59. This is the second Power Girl. It's a pretty nice looking copy. It's got some spine dings and spine damage on it, but second printing or second appearance of Power Girl is nothing to sneeze at. And then Kingdom Come. Uh, trade paperback number five of fifth printing. The reason um, I picked this up, I do have a hardcover of the um, of Kingdom Come, but uh, it is signed by Mark Wade. So I don't want to mess with that at all. Um, so I picked that up and I got it for a really, really good price from Rick. So I'm super excited about having that as well. I had it a while back. And I know the uh, it's number three, number two, or number three of the series is the one where you see Wonder Woman in her golden armor that's going to debut in uh, the DC EU. And then this, I believe, is from like the second to last one of the last shows that I picked up from before my box was full, and it is a whole lot. Ooh, I'm going to show that one last. Uh, Batman Adventures 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, and Batman Adventures 18. So they vary between being Batman Adventures and Batman and Robin Adventures. Um, but the really, really cool thing about these books are a lot of these are not even adaptations of the animated series, but they are um, stories that, that they didn't tell. And What Culture actually did a really cool video and article on like the top 10 BTAS stories that weren't told in the animated series itself, and they were told through the comics. One of them was uh, Batman Adventures The Lost Years, when where you find out where Dick Grayson was between uh, seasons four and five or three and four when he becomes Nightwing and how he becomes Nightwing. And it's a really, really great story. I love it a lot. Um, and then the last book that I picked up, it wasn't the last book that I picked up, but Dash found a second one of these and uh, held it for me. This phenomenal Wonder Woman uh, cover. And I forget the name of the artist who did this cover, um, Japanese artist, and it was just beautiful. He only had one copy and somebody else was able to snag it, but then he messaged me before his next show and he said, hey, I found another one of these if you want it. I was just like, please. Um, so I'm just like super stoked to have this. It's just, I mean, the, this, the camera on this doesn't do this justice. It's, it's just beautiful line work and the colors and the minimalism of the, uh, the actual artwork and the foreground and background is just phenomenal. So like, this is for all the people out there who might think that comics are just for kids or comics are just a goofy hobby. Like to me, this is proof that comics are art, fine art. And, and it takes a lot of skill and dedication in order to do something of this level, which is what I'm working on with my books. Um, and even this, somebody might say, well, they just took the, the story and they adapted it. I don't know if you know how hard it is to take a script and adapt it into visuals and then take a, a script that was done in a different medium and then adapt that. And here's the thing. 
when you're doing an animated style, less is more. You can't put a ton of detail in it because then you're gonna be animating more and more and more each time. So it's important to get the basics and the fundamentals across of what you're doing. There are a lot of comic book artists out there like Jeff Darrow, Alex Ross, um, you know, Art Germ, who are putting this insane amount of detail into things and people are picking up on it. And then we see stuff from like the 90s when that was kind of the norm, but in a different style with a ton of tick marks and cross hatching and just all this like sketchiness and stuff. And it was nothing that was polished. Um, but it's a form of art and, it, and it's a form of fine art in my eyes. I mean, if you can look at this, which is the variant cover, the Vic Hollins variant cover, Baby Cypress for my book, The Bubba Patrol Issue 3, and tell me that this is not fine art, then there's, then you and I are gonna have uh, a ton to debate on and disagree on. Because comic books is art. It's a matched medium between visual and written. And that's the balance. I think that's why I like it so much. There's a balance between what you're reading and what you're seeing and filling in the blanks between all of the panels. It's just like reading a novel where they leave out certain details so you can figure out what goes on um, on your own terms. But it it means so much to me in being able to tell those stories and read stories that mean a lot to me or that have been around for a long time. Like Batman the Animated Series was, I'm still going to say is the best Batman ever um, in terms of an outside the comic book medium. Um, but it's it's a... It's a lot of fun, this hobby, this industry, and it gets a lot of bad press sometimes because uh, of various things. And um, But it's, it's something I love and it's something I will fight for because I'm gonna keep creating comics and I'm gonna keep collecting comics. So uh, hope that's uh, a good explanation and I hope this is, <laughs> a good nice long haul over 30 minutes of comics that uh, I've picked up over the last week or that have arrived over the last week. Um, and I'll be going over some stuff as well in the next couple of days with some videos leading up to the Bubba Patrol 3 release party, which is going to be live on my Facebook, the Bubba Patrol Facebook page. So I'll be putting that in the description with the next videos that I make. And again, um, I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves. Uh, not just wearing your masks, washing your hands. I hope you're getting enough sleep, drinking enough water, getting vitamins, eating well, and realizing that it's okay to have days where you just, you know, veg all day or sleep all day. I've been doing that a lot more lately. Um, as the seasons are changing and the nights are getting longer and the days are getting shorter, I think it's just my mind and my body adjusting. And those are things that we have to accept. We don't have to like them. Um, but we do have to deal with them on a daily basis. And I think if we work to roll with those punches and those changes along with everything else that's going on in the world, um, I think we can be successful. I know we can be successful. And, and we, we have to ride it out and we have to be careful and we have to be cautious and we have to be helpful. But um, I don't think hiding ourselves away forever is going to be the answer. We have to find that balance. Sometimes that balances seeing a friend or seeing a family member and talking to them, being physically close to them and hearing the sound of their voice instead of just texting. I think that means a lot and that makes a big difference. It definitely does for me. And if, if these videos help because you're seeing somebody and you're interacting kind of with a real person versus something on Netflix or Hulu or whatnot, then I've done my job. You know, and hopefully it helps at least a little bit and you get to see something that's fun or interesting or if you hear me talk about something and you're like, maybe I'll, maybe I'll pick up that book or I'll, I'll seek that out. Um, I, I hope it helps in some small way. But until the next time, my name is John Anthony Chihox. I'm the anti-hero.